Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com and this is lesson 9.6 in our video series. In our previous lesson, we learned all about bundling adjustments and how to derate them when wires are bundled inside of a pipe, cable, or raceway. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about ambient temperature corrections. It's very similar. We just pull from a different table, but it's the same style demand factor process that we've been doing this entire program. Ambient temperature corrections are like this. If wires are run in an extremely hot ambient temperature, it reduces how many amps the wire can handle safely. And let's not forget the basic definition of ampacity. It's how many amps the wire can handle safely under its conditions of use. Let's get to it. Let's take another look at our primary ampacity table. In the last lesson, we learned about the first part of the note that's at the top of the table. And it says that these values are true as long as you don't have more than three current carrying conductors. But there's a second piece to this. Now, if you're in the 2017, it's at the top of the table. If you're in the 2020 and the 2023, it's at the bottom of the table. And what it's stating is that these values are true in this table as long as you're in an ambient temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Anytime you get outside of that ambient temperature, you're going to have to do an ambient temperature correction. Let's imagine that we have this circuit here, black, red, blue, and an equipment grounding conductor. Well, we know from the previous lesson that we will not have to do a bundling adjustment on this one because there's not more than three current carrying conductors. But what if we were in a factory who was making a plastic process and they had to have that room at exactly 115 degrees all the time for all of the machines to function properly? That's what we're going to learn about in this lesson when you run into those scenarios and you're pulling circuit conductors. Now let's learn about our temperature corrections table. Go ahead and head to your code cycles table number now. Pause the video if you need to. When we get to the table, we want to verify we're in the right table. And how we do that is make sure that we're in the table that says 86 degrees Fahrenheit. We do not want to be in the table that says 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The table looks identical, but it'll have all the wrong numbers that you need. So you want to make sure that you're in the table that says 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Then if you're able to in your state, I want you to highlight that table. Just highlight the title of it. So when you're flipping through and doing these questions, you're going to know that you're in the right table and you don't have to second guess yourself. Once we know that we're in the right table, let's break down the table. On the left hand side, we're going to find our column in Celsius. And that's if your actual ambient temperature is in degrees Celsius. You would start on the left hand side, find the degrees in Celsius, and then finish the process that we're getting ready to learn. Across the top, you'll see a 60, 75, and 90 degrees C column. And those correspond with the 60, 75, and 90 degrees C columns of our starting ampacity table. Then on the right hand side, you'll notice degrees Fahrenheit. And that's if your ambient temperature is listed in degrees Fahrenheit. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine that we have this circuit here with our black, red, blue in it. And we have our equipment grounding conductor. Then let's imagine we're in an ambient temperature of 115 degrees Fahrenheit. We would start on the right hand side and we would find 115 degrees. Then we would come over to the 90 degrees C column and we would find our correction factor. And all it is is another demand factor. And let's imagine that we had a wire that was 50 amps before we started. We found out that it was installed in an ambient temperature of 115 degrees. And we found out that our correction factor was 0.82. All we would have to do is take our starting ampacity, multiply it by 0.82, and we would end up with a new allowable ampacity of 41 amps. Great job. Let's talk about choosing from the right column. Just like with bundling adjustments, 99.9% .9 of the time, we're going to be choosing from the 90 degree C column for our starting ampacity. And then we have to make sure that we choose from the 90 degree C column in our temperature corrections factor table. In the event of it not being listed there, 
we're likely going to choose from the 75 if it's listed there, but we have to make sure that we choose from the 75 over here as well. But that would be under very rare circumstances when you are in the testing center. But I just want you to know about it just in case. And one thing that I do want to mention at this point in the program is NM cable. NM cable is Romex, and it is actually allowed to be chosen from the 90 degree C column. Romex is just a trade name. They also have Southwire and other trade names. But in the code book, it's called NM cable. And for the purpose of bundling adjustments and temperature corrections, you're allowed to choose from the 90 degree C column when doing those calculations. What is the allowable ampacity of a THHW number six copper conductor with an ambient temperature of 142 degrees terminating to 75 degrees C terminals? Step one, we're going to verify that our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. We head there and look for THHW and sure enough, it's right there. Now we're going to find our starting ampacity in the 90 degree C column. We head back to that table. We're going to start over here and find our number six. Then we're going to cross over and find its ampacity in the 90 degree C. And in this case, it's 75. We're going to take our number six at 75. Now we're going to check for demand factors. Is the ambient temperature greater than 86 degrees Fahrenheit? It is, so there will be a demand factor. We're going to head to our respective table depending on our code cycle. And we're going to go find our correction factor. When we get there, we're going to start on the right hand side because it was the question stated it in Fahrenheit. Then we're going to go down until we find our range of temperature. Ours was 142 degrees. Then we're going to slide over and find our correction factor. And remember, it's just a demand factor. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to head back and do our math. We take our starting impacity multiplied by the correction factor, and that gives us a new allowable impacity of 48.75, and we select B. Great job! What is the allowable impacity of a number 10 THWN-2 copper conductor that is installed in an area with an ambient temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit? Step one, we're going to verify that our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. We head to the table, we look for THWN-2, and sure enough, they're there. Now let's find our starting opacity in the 90 degree C column. We head back to the table, we come down and find our number 10 on the left, and we cross over to 40 amps. Now we check for demand factors. Is the ambient temperature greater than 86 degrees Fahrenheit? It sure is. We're going to head to our table and find our correction factor. We're going to start on the right hand side because it's Fahrenheit. We come down and find our range of temperature, which is 145, and we slide over and find our correction factor is 0.65. Now we go back and we take our starting ampacity multiplied by 0.65, and that gives us a new allowable ampacity of 26 amps, and we select D. What is the allowable ampacity of a 2 ot XHHW copper conductor that's installed in an area with an ambient temperature of 68 degrees Celsius? Step one, we're going to verify that our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. When we head to the table, sure enough, they're there. Now let's find our starting ampacity. We're going to go to the table, start on the left hand side. We're going to find 2 ot copper. Then we're going to cross over and find 195 amps. Now we check for demand factors. Is the ambient temperature greater than 30 degrees Celsius? It sure is. So we know that there will be a demand factor. We head to our correction factor table. And in this time, we're gonna start on the left-hand side because it was listed in degrees Celsius. But we have to be careful to cross all the way back over to the 90 because that's the column that we chose from. And we find that our correction factor is 0.58. We take our starting ampacity, multiply it by the correction factor, and that gives us our new allowable ampacity of 113.1 amps, and we select A. Let's get to it. That's the end of lesson 9.6. You can head over to electricalexamcoach.com for practice questions and different variants of these type of questions. I am the electrical code coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.